given us a trig identity here and we're being asked to use the fact that sec x minus tan x equals minus 5 to show what would happen when we get sec x plus tan x. Now the trick in this question is to really know your identities and to think about how we might be able to rearrange this or to change things to get sec x tan x. So the way in which we're suggesting that you go about this question is to actually multiply both sides by the conjugate of sec x tan x or by sec x plus tan x. So this is a step that is quite um, quite difficult to spot but obviously if you do spot it, if you do manage it then this is the way in which we can um, ensure we get the marks. So just excuse the presentation here, I will come down um, so I've got a bit more room. So expanding the left hand bracket gives me sec squared x minus, that's those two multiplied, minus the positive sec x tan x, um, so sorry, that's positive sec x tan x, then I've got negative sec x tan x, and then finally I've got minus tan squared x, and that's going to be equal to minus 5 lots of sec x plus tan x. Now sec x plus tan x is obviously what we're looking for here, so this might be a, a good starting point. You should notice that these two terms in the middle cancel each other out, leaving me with sec squared x minus tan squared x equals minus 5 sec x plus tan x. Now we're very close to our solution here. What we need to do is we need to think about what is the identity involving sec x and tan x. And I'm just going to show you, if you've forgotten it, how you can derive it. So remember the first identity that you would have learned for core 2 cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Now we want the identity involving tan squared, so we want the sine divided by cos squared. And if we divide the entire identity here by cos squared, we will have derived the identity we need. So cos squared over cos squared is 1, sine squared over cos squared is tan squared, and 1 over cos squared is the same as sec squared. Now, if you are looking at what we've got here, we are looking at sec squared minus tan squared. And rearranging this here can give me 1 equals sec squared x minus tan squared x. So using that, coming down here now, we're going to write sec squared minus tan squared as 1 equals minus 5 sec x plus tan x. Now, because this is only two marks, a lot of students are going to think that it should be really easy. But I would suggest that actually the two marks reflect how difficult it is, and you're not getting overly penalised if you don't get there. So from this stage, we're just dividing both sides by minus 5, which gives me minus 1 fifth is equal to sec x plus tan x. And that's what we've been asked to show. Minus a fifth is the same as minus 0.2. So that is two marks worth there. As I say, for me it's a suggestion and a reflection of how difficult the question is, not how easy it is as to the fact there's only two marks. But we have clearly done that, show that. So I'm now going to remove the working for this one and we'll have a look at part two. Part two then. Now this is um, a sort of a difficult question again to get started with. You've got these two things, you've got these two values sec x plus sec x minus tan x equals minus 5 and sec x plus tan x is 0 0.2 and we can find the exact value of cosine there are other ways of this so we can do some rearrangement of things but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and solve these as a pair of simultaneous equations so I've got sec x minus tan x equals minus 5 and I've got sec x plus tan x equals minus 0.2. So if we solve this as simultaneous equations, we're going to add the two equations together to give me 2 sec x 
is equal to these two things added together, which is minus 5.2. Now, if we divide through by sec, sorry, if we divide through by 2, why well, I said sec there, divide through by 2, we're going to get sec x is equal to minus 2.6. And then if we're wanting the exact value of cos, well, let's just re rewrite this. So rewrite sec as 1 over cos x is still equal to minus 2.6. And then what we're going to do is effectively put both of these things to the power of minus 1. Because what the power of minus 1 will do is it allows us to flip the first fraction to give me cos x. And the second one, which I'll use my calculator to do, so put minus 2.6 to the power of minus 1 in there and that will flip that over to 5 thirteenths for us so um, so cos x is equal to 5 thirteenths so that gives us our exact value of cos x again there are other ways of doing this other ways to substitute things in but it's identifying the fact that you've got these two equations to find this unknown x and that's how we then get our next three marks we then have the hence solve so for part b we are solving this thing here. Now, what this is, we've got our original equation up here, and we've just shown that the exact value of cos is equal to 5 over 13. So we've already solved this. So what we're actually looking at here is a situation where it's cos 2x minus 70 degrees is equal to the minus 5 over 13. So as we learn in uh, core 2, we're going to have to adjust our range here. So let's find our principal value first. So our principal value is when we're going to do the inverse cosine of minus 5 thirteenths. Calculator, so inverse cosine of the negative, oops, not double negative, of 5 thirteenths. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. And then we get the principal solution of 112.62 degrees. So we now need to think about what our range is going to do. So because that is our first solution. So 2x minus 70 is equal to 112.62 degrees. You see we will round to one decimal place in a little bit. But we are going to have to adjust our range. So our, our range is going to be for 2x minus 70 degrees. So doubling that and taking away 70 Let's draw a box here around there so we don't get confused with that. So the upper limit of this range is 180 take away 70, so 110. And the lower limit of this range is minus 180 minus 70, which is minus 250. So if we think about our cosine graph between those two limits, it obviously starts at 1, comes down to 90, and continues not quite as far because there is your 180. The other way, we've got a little bit more to do. So here is um, our 90, minus 90. Here is our minus 180. And it's not quite as far as minus 270. So our first solution is just after 90 here at 112.62. We then have to think about what other solutions we're going to have. So we've got one solution here and potentially a solution there. So if this distance is 112.62, that is the same distance there by the symmetry of the axis. So we've got a second solution at minus 112.62. And then to find our third solution, we would think about the symmetry this way. So it would be minus 360 plus the 112.62. So another solution there at minus 247.38. So sorry, it's a little bit messy. I'm just trying to keep it all on the one page for us. So those are our three solutions. So I'll just give us a bit more room now. So I've got 2x minus 70 is equal to 112.62 minus 112.62. And potentially this one, which is just inside our range, of 250, so just highlighting that there, of minus 247.38. So to get these in terms of x, we're going to add for, add 70 and divide by 2 to each one. So adding the 70 and then dividing by 2. So our first, this one here, our x value 
is 91.31 degrees. The next one, minus 112.62, and again, plus the 70, and divide by the two. So that one, x is equal to minus 21.31 degrees. And then our final solution, minus 247. 0.38 and again plus the 70 and divide by the 2 and that one gives us x is minus 88.69 degrees now just scrolling back up to the question we can just see at the top of the uh, the page there does a highlight cover it up that we're looking for that interval so this solution's okay this solution's okay this solution is not in the interval. So what we're going to conclude then, remove the calculator, is that x is either equal to minus 21.3 degrees to one decimal place or minus 88.7 degrees, both rounded to one decimal place there. And that's the final solution to part B of that problem.